بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته First of all, we would like to say Ramadan Mubarak to all of our viewers and inshallah this month will be a benefit to us So today inshallah in our course of the Good Companion Islam 101 with Shaykh Muhammad Arafah uh, we left off last time talking about Islam and how it develops the Muslim character. And inshallah today he will be continuing with the same subject of developing the Muslim character. And inshallah he'll delve into the topic, the stages of the character of the Muslim inshallah. So we'll hand it over to Shaykh Narafah inshallah. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashadu anna sayyidina Muhammad an abdu wa rasul. I like, inshallah, I like to uh, Congratulate uh, everyone for the month of Ramadan and I hope inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept our fasting and our qiyam and all the good deeds inshallah that we will do in the month of Ramadan. In the continuation of the importance of the message of Islam in developing the Muslim character, uh, in previous sessions I said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the message to develop the Muslim character and the Muslim environment where that Muslim character will be able to accomplish the purpose of life. Uh, today, uh, I will talk about the stages of the development. Uh, the first, uh, we need to know about uh, the human being nature, or what you, what you can call the human instinct. And this is the whole material of the mankind. Uh, this has a certain attributes. Number one, it goes with what's convenient for it. It can, and whatever convenient, it will be justifiable. That means it is able to justify its own mistakes. And it can violate other people's rights or animals or anything rights as long as that will lead to benefit to it. The value of the message of Islam is going to take this raw material, which is a whole of fitrah, and start to change it. And the first stage of the development is going to develop what we call the conscious, or Damir. And I talked earlier about the Damir and the character of the Damir. And basically the Damir now, as a first stage of the development, that means the person is able to know what is right according to Quran and Sunnah, and what is wrong, and he is in state of member of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he start once the, the Bamir or the conscious get developed, the person started to delay in itself. So in the first stage, he was ordering and commanding itself to do the wrong doing. Now if he will do the wrong things, because the, the, the conscious got developed, he will start to delay in itself. And this is called the delaying soul. Once the person conscious started to develop more, by understanding more and applying the teaching of the message of Islam, you will develop the good deeds or the amal of salih. And that going to lead to development of what is called a nafsul mutma'inna, the secure soul. Because you are doing your best, you are doing your best at that stage to do the right thing. And you stay away from all the wrong things. So you feel secure and you feel comfortable. And we keep doing the good deed, adding to more understanding to the message and to the teaching of message, it leads to the al-inqiyad or the submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in this stage, we have what is called the sensitive soul, which is in this case, the sensitive soul started to see the glory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every aspect of that life, including your own life. And once you are in the state of submission and you keep understanding the message and you keep applying the message, that's it lead to satisfied soul. And the satisfied soul that means accepting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decree and using its all resources, all what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give it to do the best to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the term. And by that, it fulfilled the purpose of life.
Jazakallah khair Sheikh for the beautiful nasiha on the characters in Islam and how it develops the character. And inshallah next we're going to be talking about in the spirit of Ramadan, the siyam and fasting and also the blessed month we're in and what we can do. And inshallah it will be in a question and answer form and we'll be asking the Sheikh about the different worships and inshallah he'll answer them. So, so first of all Sheikh, our first question is what is the meaning of the word siyam? Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah, wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa ahdahu la sharika lah, wa ashadu anna sayyidina Muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. The siyam or fasting, it means abstaining from food and drink and sexual activities from the dawn till the sunset as an act of worship. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Baqarah, the second chapter of the Holy Quran, A'udhu billah min shaitan al-rajim, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون. so Allah سبحانه وتعالى أرجين أص the fasting the act of fasting so we may acquire piety and God fearing soul. and our next question is is the Muslim obligated to fast in the month of Ramadan? yes the Muslim they are obligated to fast in the month of Ramadan because Allah سبحانه وتعالى uh, order us, and he said also in the Surah Al Baqarah, chapter 2, Shahr al Ramadan, and the Umdila Fihi al Quran, Hudan Lil Nasi, or the Natal Min al Huda or Fukhan, from an Shahid al Mufu al Shahr of Al Yasuk. So it comes to be obligation. And also, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, there are five major pillars of Islam, and fasting is one of them. So we know it's obligated, but can you tell us about the excellency of this blessed month of Ramadan we're in? Uh, the shahr, uh, there are so many excellencies, but for our purpose and for the time limit we have, we have to look at it if it's the month that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Holy Quran in. Shahr Ramadan al-ladhi umdila fi the Quran. So the excellency of that month that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us by sending the Quran in that month. Also, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-Khamsu al-Jum'a ila al-Jum'a wa Ramadanu ila Ramadan mukaffirat lima baynahamna ila al-Tanakta al-Kaba'a. That means, if you pray the five times, and from Jum'a to Jum'a, and from Ramadan to Ramadan, if you do not commit the major sin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive all the small and the minor sin that you do. And Shaykh, Who's obligated to fast during the month of Ramadan? Okay. The obligation of the month of Ramadan in every adult, mature Muslim. And in the case of the sisters, they need to be in a state of purity from the monthly period or after giving birth. And is there any license uh, that allows us to break the fast during the month of Ramadan? Yes. There are actually two kind of licenses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave. One, that you can allow you to, or it is justifiable to break a fast and you can make it later on. But it is highly recommended that you do that day on before the next Ramadan. Or otherwise, you will have to go through a different procedures. But who are those the people qualified for this license? The travelers. They may because Whatever reason, can be a heat, it can be a stress, can be overwhelmed. They have the license to break. Also, the people that they are temporarily sick, they are not permanently sick. And the people, and for the pregnant sisters and the nursing sisters, they can break the fast and make it up later on. Also, there is another kind of license that for the uh, for the persons that they cannot fast, or if they fast, that will lead to deterioration or delay of their healing. And these are the sick people, very sick people. There is no hope. Or the doctor, medical doctor, advise that you do not fast because that will delay your healing. You have to take your medication in certain times and so on. Also for the elders, the very elders that they cannot